Check this out, guys. Uh, Silvercraft 47. This is another brand underneath the Golfcraft Group umbrella. Um, this caught my attention immediately. Uh, if for those of you watch the channel, you know why. But the it's some really interesting things on this boat. The price point is amazingly competitive, and it's got legs. Um, just roll with me on this one because there are some features which are clearly designed for the Gulf. But I would like to you know pipe in and give you a few ideas. A little bit of Australianification. Is that a word? Anyway, it is now. Um, on how we could make this boat super awesome for our climate. So come on back. Um, I love the forward facing windscreen, obviously cuts out the glare. Uh, she's obviously a, a cabin boat, so great with air conditioning. We all love that these days. Side access doors and see this glass down the side of the hull, which does give you views when we are inside. But first thing I want to draw your attention to, is quad rig setup. Love my outboards, quad 400s, awesome. Fuel, ca fuel capacity is a little bit light on, uh, yes, you're only 1500 litres for that setup, so you might be moderate range. It's not going to be extended range, but it's, it is what it is. So that's one thing. Let's jump on board. Um, speed range, uh, you'll be pushing 50 knots on this boat uh, at wide open throttle. So this is currently how she's set up. We've got these opening deck hatches. She's all teaked. We've got proper, decent barbie area. Um, storage under here, drawers, live bait tank, over there, so she is set up for fishing. I've got rod holders and rod holders over here. Um, you know, personally, I would probably do the extendable shore shade, but this is what they've done at the factory. It's cool, it works, but we might be able to improve slightly on that if you're rolling with me on this. Um, come straight inside and let's have a look at the cabin. So, oh, I love the smell of fiberglass in the morning. I actually do, like, when I smell fiberglass or petrol, I think boats, which says fun, and that says Saturdays and Sundays. So uh, it does actually, I'm serious when I say that. So what we currently have out in this, this, uh, in this layout is this lounge. You'd sit four to five people across the back here, and you're gonna be really comfortable underway at speed, getting you to T destination. We're all in air-conditioned comfort just here, but, this is what I was thinking. If you knocked out this back wall here and did concertina glass, imagine having flow through all the way to the back of the boat. You could move that wet bar area to the transom and then either have seats on the side or maybe, maybe some drop down wings and do a row of seats either side or something like that just to make this whole area really flow through. The next thing you could possibly do, and like the Silvercraft guys are probably gonna get so angry at me for just redesigning their boat in my video, but you could spin these seats around um, and then this could turn from driving station to social station, flow through, air conditioned when you want, and open when you want as well. So that's just, just an idea. Leave a comment in the description if you're following my thought process agree or disagree, I don't mind. So this is your side access here and here, decent size sliding doors. We've got some storage underneath here. That's gonna be good for safety grab bags. And then jump into the helm and let's get a feel for this baby. You do feel very powerful. She's basically a 50 foot boat. Um, so from a sitting position, this is comfortable. I got visibility to the bow. She's a higher bow because the accommodation is absolutely epic on this thing. And we'll see that in a second. Um, and then, you know, everything you need at the helm uh, in terms of electronics, systems, and management. So that's all within easy reach. I've got a couple of footsteps just here, which will flip up. And would you stand up when driving? Yeah, I guess so, maybe. Increases your um, visibility slightly. Um, so that, that's a possibility. You, got, you have the flip up bolster as well. Um, slightly thick pillars just here. So that may be a hindrance if you're doing a little bit of racing around the harbour and needing to look out for other people. But um, I'd need to test drive the boat to tell you that, to be honest, uh, because I haven't. So come down and check out the accommodation. So you come straight down into this saloon area and the um, first thing I need to point out is this is a family style accommodation because you will, you will sleep five people um, or six if you had someone here on the couch as well. Actually, possibly seven if you could you could actually sleep someone on that couch. But um, this is very nice. We've got access to the fuel tankage through these opening hatches just here. And then we have a small galley. 
on starboard. So we've got a, a, a dual burner just there, flat screen TV here, microwave there, fridge in here, sink, a little bit of storage, and a little bit of storage above there. And then you come forward into what would be considered the master. So this is a nice big island bed. We've got some storage on either sides. We've got a hanging locker just over on starboard. And then if I just open this door for you, you can pop around that corner and check out the head with enclosed shower. The enclosed shower is in the head, but at least you've got that door there, so you're not gonna wet the vanity area. So that's still pretty handy. And then we'll go straight back because the uh, midship's cabin is like the old Riviera M430s. Um, those of you who are Australian and know what I'm talking about, um, it's got a, a nice big queen on starboard and a single on port. So there's the feeling of space is noticeable down here. Um, I'll just sit on the bed. So I'm 5'7", I can sort of just sit up there. If I was lying on the cushions, I could sit up and read. I've got windows out either side. We've got the blinds closed at the moment. And you've just got plenty of space for a night, comfortable in the air conditioning. Got your reading lights, you got areas for, for um, your gear bags. You just take a, a small weekend bag and you could chuck it in the corner there. And um, you know, it's pretty, pretty good. But then the surprise is it's not a single head boat. So check that out. So we've got another head just in there with a shower. So that's awesome. That really makes this a proper overnight boat. Oh, I'll close that. Ooh, hello again. Um, I just think that's great. So the, the price point, I, I did some quick calculations in Australian dollars. You know, a 38 foot US brand big day boat with a triple rig on the back, which I have tested on this channel, um, would be same price as this boat. And we're talking 47 feet. So you get another 10 feet for your money if you build it in the UAE. So come forward and check out this bow area because it's really quite impressive. And I think this style, it's now um, bridging, or it's bridging the gap between adventure boat and sports cruiser. So if you think Riviera M430 back in the day, really cool, awesome, sleek boat, and then you combine adventure style, Axapar type vibe, and you mix the two in a mixing bowl, I think this is what you, you might come out with in certain scenarios because you've got the lounging spaces, you've got the sleeping spaces, you have the epic performance, and the performance is a step up now because we're going outboard power, so we can do ridiculous speeds, you know, high 40 knots. Um, so it's, it's ticking a lot of boxes in my mind. Got our anchor set up there, hatch opening down into the master cabin, Cut a nice little timber step up here onto the sun lounge, which is huge. And then, as all the Aussies will want to know, we could put roof racks up here, put your surfboards, stand up paddle boards, you might put some epic kayaks or skis up there as well. So leave all your toys up here and then deploy them when you need. So anyway, just a quick walkthrough guys. I, I just think this, this particular boat has got legs for a few of you. If you're looking for something that will get you to your destination really fast, really enjoyably, and then park up on anchor for a day or two, I think this could be an option. And the price point, geez, you're getting another 10 feet for your money compared to something built in America, could be a good argument. Let me know what you think.